Hey guys, James Phillips here with Coach Philip Bailey. Uh, Coach Bailey, this is our last show of the year. It is. You guys didn't yeah. make the playoffs, right? Yeah, no, we didn't make the playoffs. So bittersweet, last show of the year. Though. But you know, uh, three wins in a region like you guys were playing in. I had told somebody, I said, if y'all win five games this year, that's state coach of the year material. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, our schedule was tough. I mean, we knew that going in, and uh, you know, we encountered a lot of adversity. You know, a couple of things here, or there, go a different way than. You know, maybe some of the results uh, might have been a little different, but you know, the record, you know, being three and seven ain't one what anybody would have wanted. Uh, but I'm proud of our kids, man. I'm proud of the effort they played with. I'm proud of the way they fought. Um, you know, we got better. We absolutely got better as the year went on, and right. I think there's definitely some positives to build on uh, moving forward. So I think the future is bright. I'm proud of our seniors. Uh, I'm thankful for their effort and what they did, and they're laying a foundation for for something that's going to be really special around here right. know, for years to come. So. Thankful for him for that. Well, and y'all win two out of the last three games. Mm -hmm. You get your quarterback back that's been out, you know, for over a month. Yeah, that was really helpful. Yeah. yeah. It's tough offensively, you know, without your quarterback because it really don't matter what you're trying to do on offense. Everything goes through that guy. Right. And, uh, you know, him going down, that, that was a tough blow for us. Uh, but getting him back, man, that was a huge shot in the arm. And he definitely developed and progressed. Um, as the season went on, and he got a lot better. And we're excited about his future and, and his development and, and what God's got in store for him. Well, and he won our player of the week for two out of the four weeks that he played. Yeah. Um, and let's talk about this, this last game, Bessemer City. Um, we, we had talked last week about how they're more, you know, at the level that, that y'all needed to play, but they were quite a bit under the level that Jasper was uh, on Friday. Uh, yeah, and Coach Rudy Griffin, you know, he, uh, he's he got his work cut out for him there. He's a good coach, man. He's yeah. done a good job. I think he's the fourth head coach that they've had there in four years. Right. And, and COVID um, really hit their community hard. Me and him talked about that, and his numbers um, were down. So uh, he's doing a good job, man. He, he's going to get it back rolling there. Well, it's been a program with a lot of history to it, too. It has, yeah. It used to be just Lanier. Yeah. yeah, years ago. I mean, they've, they've had a strong uh, tradition of success around there um, and a lot of good athletes, and he'll get it rolling. Yeah, you know, he'll get it right there. Uh, but yeah, man, I was proud of the way our guys came out and competed. Um, I thought they played well uh, in that game on both sides of the ball, on yeah. offense and defense. I thought Spencer really played at a high level. I mean, you can watch him the game by game. You know, after he got back and watch his level of play uh, improve and increase, and he played at a really high level um, in that first half on Friday night. So really excited for him. Uh, he's only going to get better, man. Still a tenth grader. We got two more years with him. So really excited for him and the rest of our guys. Yeah, talk about how that game went. I mean, uh, it's one of the you know, one of the things that we've talked about all year is y'all kind of started slow in a lot of games, and uh, that looked like a game where they really wanted it there from the beginning. They did, yeah. And all week, man, they were excited to play. And we talked about the importance of that game all week, the importance of, of sending our seniors out the right way, you know, because of everything that they had done around here uh, and getting them a win in their last one. And then we talked about the importance of, you know, for our younger guys of finishing well and finishing right. the season well and, and uh, developing some positive momentum going into the offseason. Uh, so they did, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, defense came out, got stops. I mean, I think offense scored the first maybe six times they touched it. Uh, really executed well, um, hit some big balls down the field, uh, and that's what Spencer brings to the offense that we didn't have when he was there. Being right. able to drive the football down the field, throw it down the field, keep people honest, uh, not having everybody hanging out there in the box. So uh, he did a really good job, man. Did a really good job throwing and catching it. Um, made some nice plays, man. Yeah. Executed well, and like I said, I mean, defense got stops. I think Bessemer City had negative yardage um, yeah. in the first half, you yeah. know, so they kept getting it back to us, getting it back to us in good field position. Um, executed our throws down the field, and we're able to score a lot of points. Um, um, quickly, you know, sort of go in the locker room ahead, 42 to nothing. Uh, it's a good place to be. Right. And then finished it up, finished 49-14. They scored mm -hmm. late, a couple times late. And yep. They did. We were able to play a lot of people. Got some guys their first varsity experience right. um, on Friday night, so that's always a positive thing. Got some younger guys in there, you know, got them some reps. Uh, and I thought those guys competed well. Right. Awesome. Well, I may put you on the spot here. Uh-oh, uh, here we go. You know, we're we going to do something a little different, but, uh -oh. you know, you're sending these seniors out. Yep. And you don't have to talk about every one of them, but talk talk about some of these seniors and not necessarily what they – maybe what they did on the field, but just what they mean to you. And, I mean, this is a – going to be a special group because it's your yeah. first group of seniors as a head coach. So just kind of talk about some of them and, and what you think they'll do in the future or, or you know, how they are. That just give us some information on them. Yeah, it is a special group to me, man. You know, my first group is, is seniors and then just everything they went through, man, because this has been such a crazy year um, from the transition of, 
of coaches and, and me getting the job and, and bump up in classification and, you know, increased level of competition, the COVID shutdown. I mean, all kind of stuff, yeah. you know, that this team is adversity that they faced and what they've been through. And these guys just stay in the course. Um, standing in there fighting this thing out, you know, come what may. I, I'll always remember them for that, you know, the character of people um, that they were. You know, uh, Mason Slaughter, uh, he's a guy that really stands out. Um, he got so much better as the year went on. Right. You know, and I think he'll have some opportunities to play um, on Saturdays. He's looking to go into the Air Force Academy. You know, that's what he wants to do. Um, he could have an opportunity uh, to play there, and he might have some opportunities to play elsewhere. But um, he was our leader. I mean, he was the yeah. emotional leader of our football team. So thankful for him. You know, thankful for everything he did. Connor Whitley um, is another guy. He'll play baseball um, for us in the spring. I think he's looking at going to Shelton State. Uh, to play baseball, um, same deal, man. Tough kid, you know. We, we we got everything, everything he had, you know, was what he gave us. Uh, Brody Benson um, is another guy. He has some opportunities to play on Saturdays. Um, could go to Harvard. Could go to UT Martin. Um, and we had several of those guys that got put in positions that you know typically they wouldn't have been put in. You know, right. as far as having to play multiple positions and and not what any of us wanted, but you know that's kind of what we had to do. You know, right. the spot we're in. Andre Neal is another one of those guys. Um, he had to play some defense for us. You know, he's really a fullback tight end, but, you know, had to take some reps on the defensive side. But he, he's a guy um, that will have some opportunities to play on Saturdays. And, right. and there's certainly several others. You know, we had 17 seniors. But thankful for them, man. Thankful for their effort. Thankful for their fight. You know, just the character that they had right. uh, to stand in there and, and to finish the race and, and to fight that thing out. They'll always be special. And how much do you think just what they did this year improves what's going to happen down the road a year, two, three, four, five years? You know? No, I think it absolutely will because I think they set a standard, you know, a standard for effort and for how you carry yourself and culture. And culture has become such a buzzword around athletics. Everybody right. throws that word around. Uh, culture, I mean, simply defined, like what that really is, that's your core beliefs, who you are, what, what do you believe? And then how does that drive your behavior every day? And I think when you talk about the culture of our program and what these guys have done and instilled in our younger guys is no matter what you're gonna come in here and fight every day right you're play football one way right and, and you're gonna come to fight and, and um, so I, I think they're laying a foundation with our younger guys and that mentality and that mindset and that'll just continue to grow and bleed in all the classes that come after them so I, I think they have a huge part you know of what this program is gonna look like three four five ten years down the road right well and you always talk well about your coaching staff. You say they're probably the best coaching staff in America. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the coaching staff and just what they've meant this season, too. Yeah, man, those guys mean a ton to me, uh, all of them professionally and personally. You know, we're close. Um, coach Easley, uh, offensive coordinator. Coach Matthews, running backs coach. Coach Darwin coaches our fullbacks and tight ends. Coach Pro uh, is our wide receivers coach. And then Coach Pugh, Ryan Pugh, um, is an offensive assistant. So, you know, everything that, that those guys went through on the offensive side, it was tough there for a while, man. Yeah. You know, uh, some of the people we had to play and the defenses we had to play and, and then not having a quarterback and, and being young and inexperienced up front and other places. I mean, it, it was a struggle at times. But, I mean, those guys never wavered for, from what we're called to do and what we're here to do and, and doing everything that we can for our kids, you know, and putting them in the best spot. So thankful for those guys, you know, on the offensive side. On the defensive side, Coach Kyle Butler, uh, defensive coordinator. Coach Luke Lanier coaches our D-line. Uh, Cody Brown is outside linebackers. Clint Crumpton is safeties. And Coach Ryan White uh, coaches our corners. Same deal, man. I mean, never wavering from their commitment um, to our program and our kids, uh, coaching those guys up the right way, putting them in the best chance to be successful, and just loving our kids and right. being there for them through everything. You know, because a lot of men, and I've seen other programs and other places, you lose six in a row, and some of those guys kind of fold the tents on right. things, right? But but this group of men, the leadership that they provide, you know, in holding this thing together and not forgetting, not wavering what we're called to do. Right. Uh, they did a great job of that and I'm, I'm thankful for them. Well just me being close to the program to see them you know they have a ton of passion mm -hmm. not just for the game but for the kids like you said mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times you see coaches on, you know that, that may have passion but it, it comes out more as yelling and screaming and that sort of thing and that's yeah. not that's not your group uh, no. but they, they're continually coaching and coaching about life and, and mm -hmm. football and that's a good thing to say. It is, man. They're passionate men, you know, and they have a lot of energy. And, and energy doesn't always come out yelling and screaming. And, you know, right. when you're on the field, you're there to teach. Right. right. And you're there to instruct. And, uh, you know, this is a calling you know, to me and all of our guys. Uh, old timer told me that one time, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever got. He said, don't have a career, have a calling. Right. And, and that's how we treat this and, and that's what, how we view this. So. Well, since we're wrapping it up this week, what can you say about the community and how, I mean, they, you continue to have big crowds, people supported you uh, throughout the year? 
Yeah, the community's been tremendous, man. You know, that's why that's why I fought so hard for this job. You know, Jasper's a special place uh, because of special people. You know, special people uh, are, are what builds a community, and, and we have that here in Jasper. You know, we, we've got all the things that we need, again, to enjoy long-term success around here right. as a football program. Uh, and there's so many. You know, I've only been here, this is my third season, but even in a relatively short amount of time, um, I feel like me and my family have developed very strong bonds and relationships. Uh, with a lot of people around here. Uh, this is a tremendous community. Me and my wife both work in the school system. You know, my kids are in the school system here. Uh, we love this place, man. And the support that they provide for our, our football program has meant a great deal to us, and we're thankful for it. Yep. Well, just anything else you want to add? No, man. Appreciate you, James. We always have a good time uh, doing this show. Appreciate Jeffrey. Uh, I'm not sure what you pay him, but whatever it is, it's not enough. It's not enough. That's a I plug guarantee. for Jeffrey yeah. getting a raise right there. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. So I think you put together a bloopers video. Are yeah, we gonna, well, we yeah, we, you mentioned that we, so. have, uh, we have some fun every now we and then. And we, we probably did. couldn't put everything that was fun on no, the you got No, because you got a potty mouth. So right. We can't I, use all of Yeah, that. it's just me that has a potty mouth. certainly wouldn't be me. Right. Uh, but we do have a lot of fun, and I, I have appreciated you this year. Yeah. People don't realize, and they'll see it on the on the blooper reel, is that before we do a shoot any time, we have to clap. Yeah, you're not very good and, at clapping. You got better, though. You I have did. gotten better, but yeah. I'm not good at it. And I've, uh, I've, I've, It's I've, a learned skill. You, I mean, you can... It's I joke around that I have velvet hands. Paper handling hands. Right. right. Well, right. Uh, not blue-collar working man not, hands. Not working man hands at all. Um, but... Uh, you have improved my clap game. Well, you're welcome. And I appreciate I'm glad that. Glad that I could bestow that gift. But on. most of the time, I let you handle it because uh, you got sure. you got good head good clap, heavy hands. Heavy but hands. you did tell me, and you, we'll see it in there. Yeah. I, I was kind of doing this. Um, yeah, you know. not, that's not correct. Right, yeah. right. So I appreciate um, that. It shows that sure. you are a good coach. Thank you. Uh, you were able to coach me up. If I can, life. if I can teach James how to clap, I can teach a lot of people a lot of stuff. Probably. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Well, so uh, guys, thanks for tuning in every week and and. Even you know, we had a rough season at times, um, we still stayed through the course, and uh, our guys fought hard, and our coaching staff fought hard, and you guys showed up every week to uh, root them on. Uh, so a in leaving, we will uh, kind of kick to our blooper reel video, and hope you enjoy that, and uh, we'll see you next season when the Vikings uh, hit the field again. Awesome. Go bike. Go bikes. You clap. You better. There we go. Man, that is a good clap. Heavy hands. Yeah. You give me the rundown of the gonna, uplifting this we got here. Glaze over uh, Gardendale. Okay. We're just going to glaze over that. <laughs> Maybe we'll get in here one time. We won't have a game. We have to glaze over. <laughs> right. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if I look back on my life and I say I didn't win enough football games, I can live with that. Right. But if I, I got one chance to be a dad, right. I screw up being a dad, I don't get a second chance. At that's that. true. So that's kind of where I'm at. Your intro is here. Okay. I screwed up with Stone, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, you got like you got like five yeah, I chances. Got, I got, I you got, got multiple more. chances. Right. I got four. That's just a numbers game. <laughs> just playing the high. I got to get one of them right. right. So I went on the air after that, and I'm sure I was down like Chinatown, <laughs> like these freaking guys, man. There we go. Boom, nailed it. Getting hang out. Uh, but they're a good team. Yeah. Okay, I'll be. Probably playing them in a damn mud bowl. Coming yeah, that's what it sounds like because their field's not very good anyway. The that's another grass, thing Joe was it, talking it about. It doesn't drain well. It's down in a hole, and we're about to get flooded yeah. on tomorrow is what everybody's saying. So. And then Gardendale, right? We thought we was going to get all that rain against Gardendale. And then we didn't get anything. Not a drop. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. Mm -mm. Oh, go. I like that. Oh, look, you mm -hmm. clapped your... Clap my thing off. Clap your pack off. Are we in <laughs> Call Jonathan Allen. Tell him we're going to move this game. Hey, I talked to the guys at the paper. <laughs> they decided we're going to We all it. decided that the <laughs> best thing to do. Get so what all you want to talk about? Whatever you want to talk about, James. Glad we got to talk this out, guys. Mm -hmm. I've been part of several conversations like this. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna release this publicly during right. the Coach Bailey show because I haven't talked to my administration yet. Right. You gotta right. give, you gotta give people what they came to see. Right. right. Gotcha. Just do a close up on, on Coach. <laughs> this is the money. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a homer. You are. <laughs> Which I I'm thankful for it. For any of we our teams. It. I mean, I yeah. do that all the time. If, yeah. if our teams are getting whipped, I'm like. Yeah, let's just not worry about that part right. of the story. Let's just highlight the positive. Yeah. yeah you the best ever story about that. Second round of playoffs, 2010. It was a GA, Georgia Southern. We're playing William & Mary. We get left at the hotel. We didn't miss the bus. Right. We got left at the hotel. Me and two other GAs. 
And like I see the bus as it's pulling down the street. So we had to call one of the boosters, a guy named Derek Seals. He's a good guy. He came and picked us up. All right, he took us to the game. Well, this is a, I mean, this is a Brown two like right. Division one playoff game. Now it's not like Tuscaloosa or Alabama, but there's still like there's twenty twenty five thousand people at this game. Right. He couldn't drop us off like right by the. Right. Game. You could just. Walk no, no, no. In. He dropped us off like a mile from the thing. So we had to run. <laughs> To the stadium, I swear to God, I'm wearing like our khakis, like sideline gear, me and two of the GS. All right, so Nate Baker, he's the O-line coach at Savannah State right now. Me and him are about the same size. Not exactly built for distance running, right. but we can cover a mile, right. okay? The other guy was Chris Couch. He's special teams at Tulane now. Couch was about 350. Ooh. I didn't think he was going to make it. Ooh. Did not think he was going to make it. So we finally get to the gate. And our call sheets, our sideline passes, all that kind of stuff was on the bus. We didn't have any of that. So you didn't so we have, have, any, have none of it. So I had to go game. talk to this old guy, Kiwanis Club, Road to Remember, right. taking up tickets to the game. I said, look, man, we're supposed to be on that sideline. The bus left us. We just ran here. Like, I have got to get over there. And the guy was cool. He just laughed at us. He said, well, I guess you boys better get going. And he just let us in. <laughs> it was, uh, that was wild, man, like running through tailgates. Oh, trying yeah. to get to the stadium in, like, your sideline gear. <laughs> when y'all were going in at halftime, mm -hmm. all I could think was, oh, no, it felt different. No, I'll tell you why I felt And you, better. I could tell, when I talked to you, I felt better because I thought I'm going to come up to you. Because physically we can. Right. That's the difference. Right. Physically we can. I'll, I will try not to make you cry. Okay. I'll try not to make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> do you need me to clap for you again? Yeah, go right here. I like that. Man, right. that's a good clap. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all your support. Oh, you, you do that. You got to keep your wrist locked. That's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah, you can't be like that. Wrist stays locked. You just got to smack. You gotta find that little honey hole. Right in that right spot. In I need to practice. You huh? do. Go. Better. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Better. It's a technique to it. All right, coach. One last time. Give us a clap. Oof. A lot of pressure. So good. Clap.